The Space Race, the Americans versus the Russians. And at the beginning, the Russians were always ahead. Their boosters were more powerful. They were the first to orbit an artificial satellite, first to put a man in orbit. But in the business of spying from space... The Americans were the first to put up the first reconnaissance satellite. It was called GRAB. This is the story of a groundbreaking intelligence satellite experiment, one using electronic technology proven at sea and conceived by a pioneering naval research laboratory engineer who believed it was possible to locate active Russian radar sites from the high ground of space, Mr. Reed Mayo. Today's director at the Naval Center for Space Technology, Mr. Pete Wilhelm, knew him well. I worked with Reed Mayo. He was very loyal to his people, always gave them the credit. He's just a wonderful man. And the radar detection technology he developed was soon to take a monumental leap. Reed had been working on a system for the submarines. What they wanted was when the submarine would come to the surface, they'd bring the periscope up and the captain would spin the periscope around one turn. And what he was wanting to find out is are there any ships up there that are gonna spot me before I come, you know, break the surface? They thought, geez, if you had some way of putting a, a detector in the periscope that could detect radar pulses, we'd listen, we'd not just look through the thing, but you'd have earphones on, and if you heard radar pulses, better go down. That was Reed's byline that uh, all he was doing was raising the periscope 500 miles. It was winter, 1958. While traveling in Pennsylvania, Reed Mayo and his family found themselves caught in a fierce nighttime snowstorm and needed to take immediate shelter at a roadside diner. While there, Reed pondered the possibilities of radar detection from space. Using the back of a placemat, he drew up range calculations to see what it would take to allow a low Earth orbiting satellite to intercept Russian radar signals and relay data to a receiving station. So he ran the calculation that, you know, I know how strong these radars are. From satellite altitude, would I be able to get enough signal to detect it? He convinced himself that, yeah, that would work. It was at that moment Reed Mayo knew he was onto something, something that would revolutionize U.S. electronic intelligence gathering. It was given the name GRAB. It stood for uh, Galactic Radiation and Background. Different people called it by different names within their organization. Dino, I think, was a name that the uh, folks at the Naval Security Group, I believe, came up with it. People from the Pentagon are the ones who came up with the name Tattletail. To us, working on the satellite, all I knew it as was Solrad. Wilhelm had yet to be read in to the classified mission. Solrad was his program, a genuine scientific experiment measuring solar radiation effects in space. There, of course, came a time when NRL management brought him in on the secret mission. Some people I'd never seen before, one of them was Reed Mayo, they closed the door and say, okay, now we're gonna tell you what this thing is really all about. We're gonna spy on the Soviets. We're gonna find out where their S-band radars are. Holy smokes, I'm working on a, a spy satellite. <laughs> I was blown away. Lab management, they asked the question, could both payloads, the Solrad payload and the GRAB payload, could they both fit in the same Vanguard satellite? The answer came back, yeah, there's enough room in there, we can fit them both in. So now we had a really good cover story. We could talk about Solrad, and it was a legitimate scientific experiment, and we didn't need to talk about the classified part of it. So it was probably the best security you, you could have asked for. Six weeks before we launched it in June of 60, Francis Gary Powers had been shot down by the Soviets, doing exactly the same mission. He was flying into Soviet airspaces, trying to figure out where the hell the radars are. 
Eisenhower was so concerned about getting caught spying again, he approved the launch, but he said, every time you want to turn that thing on, I want to know about it and I want to approve it in advance. On the 22nd of June, 1960, riding a Thor Able Star booster, Grab made it into orbit. And for the first time, the U.S. possessed a space reconnaissance program. Wilhelm explains how it all worked. It detected S-band radars. And the way the satellite was built, it's basically a sphere. It had six round solar panels on it. Also, you will see little white things sticking out of the satellite, and there's six of them. We didn't want it to look like an antenna. So what we told everybody was those were temperature sensors. So every time a radar pulse would strike the satellite, it would trigger this multivibrator, which would modulate the transmitter. So when you put earphones on and listen to it, it had a very distinct sound to it. It sounded like a radar. It had the repetition rate of a radar. We had to build transportable ground stations that were in various locations around the Soviet Union. And it had an antenna that you could steer in azimuth. It actually used a steering wheel from a bus. If the Soviets had known what frequency we were on and had tuned to it, they would have been able to figure out what the hell we were doing. But they never did. The Russian shootdown of Gary Powers forced Eisenhower to terminate all reconnaissance flights over Russia, leaving the U.S. with no means of secretly eavesdropping into this dangerous nation. It forced us into space. And this little tiny satellite comes along and in a period of a weeks, maybe a month or so, learned more about the laydown of the Soviet radar picture than pilots could have ever found. The Russians may have been first to reach the high ground of space, but the USA remains above and beyond all other nations when it comes to space-based electronic intelligence, thanks to Grab, the NRO, and Reed Mayo.